Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sofia Palace in the presence of His Majesty King's personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Hala Al Ansari, a delegation from the UN Women and Members of the International Jury, the Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment, led by UN Under Secretary General and UN Women Executive Director Sima Sami Bahouth. The delegation is visiting the Kingdom to announce the winners of the second edition of the Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment. During the ceremony, which will be held tomorrow, under the patronage of Her Royal Highness the Wife of His Majesty the King and Supreme Council for Women President Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa on the sideline of the Kingdom celebrations of Bahraini Women's Day 2022. His Majesty the King commended the efforts of the International Jury's President and Members praising the pioneering role of the Supreme Council for Women, led by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to enhance the status of Bahraini women and consolidate their effective role at the international level. His Majesty appreciated the ongoing fruitful cooperation between the SCW in Bahrain and UN women across various fields, especially in supporting Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment and promoting women's issues globally. His Majesty the King lauded the benefit goals of the award, aiming to highlight the importance of women's contributions, development efforts and social stability in all countries. His Majesty noted that Bahrain boasts a rich past and an advanced civilization, adding that Bahraini women have contributed significantly to the Kingdom's development process and play a noble role in taking care of their families. In this regard, His Majesty the King expressed pride in the numerous achievements of Bahraini women citing their contributions to the Kingdom's comprehensive development and decision-making processes and their success in reaching the highest positions locally, regionally and globally. The Second National Order Office, the NAO Order and Partnership Symposium, kicked off with 300 participants for most entities covered by the NAO's audit mandate. The two-day symposium focuses on the importance and role of the Supreme Audit Institutions, the audit types carried out by the NAO in Bahrain, the latest developments in the NAO's work and the best way to deal with its reports, observations and recommendations. The symposium will discuss digital transformation and modern technology, the importance of electronic auditing in light of this transformation, ways and aspects of enhancing cooperation and partnership between the NAO and the entity subject to its audit technical developments in the field of auditing and the need to deal with them, as well as other topics. NAO Auditor General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa said that the symposium aims to raise awareness of the importance of the role of Supreme Audit Institutions and to raise the level of cooperation and coordination and partnership between the NAO and the relevant entities to achieve the desired integration into the audit work. The symposium comes in line with the NAO's 20th anniversary, which was established in 2002 as one of the outcomes of the development process of His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The first session of the Municipal Council of the Northern Governors was held, during which the Chairman and his Deputy were elected, after the members of the Council took the oath before the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture Engineer Wyla Mubarak. In the presence of the Under Secretary for Municipal Affairs, Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Director General of the Northern Government Municipality, Engineer Lamia Afidala, and a number of Ministry officials. The Minister congratulated Shuba Alawadai on his election as Chairman of the Municipal Council of the Northern Government for the sixth municipal session. He also congratulated Zaina Jasm on her election as Deputy Chairman. Al Mubarak affirmed the richness of the municipal experience in Bahrain, adding that it has developed over the past years as a result of the support it receives from His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted that the accumulation of knowledge and experiences of many members will make the sixth municipal session distinguished and will complete the implementation of development projects and programmes that have been reflected in enhancing the quality of municipal services provided to citizens. He stressed that the Ministry is keen on harnessing all its capabilities for the municipal councils in order to carry out the tasks to the fullest. He also noticed that the Ministry is working to prepare the appropriate ground for the new members to exercise the municipal duties for the next session by organising an integrated set of workshops and lectures 
specialised in legal and social issues, in addition to the methodology for dealing with government institutions and agencies. Delegated by His Majesty the King, the Minister of Social Development, Osama bin Ahmed al Uzfar, participated in the 38th session of the Standing Committee for Economic and Commercial Cooperation of the Organisation of Islamic Cooperation, COMCEC, held in Turkey. On the occasion, the Minister delivered Bahrain's speech, in which he affirmed the importance of the meeting's topics, foremost of which providing effective social assistance and socio-economic empowerment in light of the global spread of COVID-19 pandemic and to alleviate poverty. He reviewed Bahrain's experience in the field of social protection and precautionary measures it took to confront these challenges during the spread of the virus and several measures taken to support citizens with electricity and water bills. Alasfor also reviewed the initiative launched by the Bahraini government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which include a series of well thought out policies and programmes directed at the lowest income groups, most in need of government support. He wished the session to come up with the best recommendations and decisions and to reach a fruitful mechanism on enhancing cooperation between the participating countries. Under the patronage of the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Barak Juma, the Ministry, in cooperation with the Mohammed bin Zayed Award for Best Teacher, held a ceremony to announce the finalists from Bahrain for the second phase of the award in its fourth edition. During the ceremony, it was announced that the two teachers from Bahrain qualified for the second phase of the award, named Zainab Said Salman from Al Alia Private School and Kaitha Hamza Jafar from Al Qadi Tia Elementary School for Girls. The coordinators in charge of the award in the kingdom were also honoured. On the occasion, the Minister of Education delivered a speech in which he congratulated the two qualified teachers, wishing them success in the coming stages of this important competition, which mainly aims to explore and honour creative teachers, establish leadership standards in the education sector and consolidate a culture of excellence and creativity that contribute to the pre pre preparation of future competencies in education. The Minister recalled the outstanding Bahraini teachers who were granted the award in its previous editions, which is considered a tribute in light of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King. For his part, the award Secretary General, Dr Hamid Ahmed al delivered a speech in which he lauded the Ministry of Education's great support for this award since its launch, noting the participation of 13 Arab and foreign countries in this year's edition which is a reflection of the importance of the award and the value it enjoys locally and internationally. During the Cabinet meeting, the completion of 21 of 27 programmes in the Economic Recovery Plan were announced in light of the continuous cooperation between the Executive and Legislative Authority to achieve the plan's desired results. Since the launch of the Economic Recovery Plan, it included 27 comprehensive programmes as a roadmap for achievements to support the national economy and improve economic conditions. The Cabinet meeting shed light on the course of the Economic Recovery Plan, in which more than 77% of the plan's programmes were completed and the remaining six programmes are being implemented during the coming period. During the Cabinet meeting, the memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance and National Economy showed a rise in many economic indicators, which were achieved by a combined effort of all concerned parties whether from executive and legislative authorities or the private sector. The Secretary General of the Shura Council, Karima al Abbasi, affirmed the Ge General Secretariat's interest in providing all means of support and assistance to the members of the Council in a manner that contributes to the advancement of the outputs of the parliamentary work in Bahrain. Al Abbasi announced the plan for the parliamentary support programme for the sixth legislative term entitled Towards Sustainable Legislative Action, which aims to support members of the Shura Council to fully perform their role. She explained that the parliamentary support programme for the sixth legislative term stems from basic values which are excellence, sustainability and leadership and relies on three methodologies, the first of which is the adoption of the speech of His Majesty the King, which His Majesty delivers at the opening ceremony of the session in addition to workshops and specialised courses. The Ministry of Health announced that a newly developed Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 booster vaccine will be made available at primary healthcare centres across Bahrain. The Ministry encourages those interested in receiving the booster shot to head directly to the primary healthcare centre without the need to register. The newly developed 
bivalent vaccine will be administered as a booster shot and targets the original virus strain and the Omicron variant to provide a broad protection against COVID-19 and its mutations. The Ministry of Health noted that a list of primary healthcare centres providing the new Pfizer-BioNTech bivalent booster shot can be found on the Ministry's website.